Of all the Italian aperitifs, Campari has to be the most iconic. Its bright red color is unmistakable and its bracing bitterness offers the perfect complexity to cocktails when used right. Campari's recipe has been kept a secret for hundreds of years and for the most part remained unchanged. It's said that the recipe contains over 60 ingredients. After a few months of tinkering, I think I've been able to get as close to Campari's distinct flavor profile as you can get with just under 20 ingredients. Many of these ingredients are found in most Amari and aperitivos. The number one scent I pick up on in Campari is the strong citrus aroma, which is likely attributed to dried bitter orange peel. I also wanted to add some fresh citrus aromas in there in the form of lemon and grapefruit. I don't know if the original Campari recipe has lemon or grapefruit in it, but it certainly has a very grapefruity taste to me. Campari is also particularly herbal in its flavor profile, so I'll be adding some commonly used herbs such as rosemary, marjoram, thyme, and sage. For this recipe, I'm using a half a cup of sugar, 25 grams of bitter orange peel, 15 grams lemon peel, 15 grams of grapefruit peel, 6 grams of angelica root, 6 grams of wormwood, 2 grams of marjoram, 1 and a half grams of sage, 2 grams of thyme, 2 grams of rosemary, 2 grams of cinnamon, 1 star anise pod, 3 grams of cloves, 6 grams of Turkish rhubarb root, 6 grams of orris root, and 3 grams of cochineal bugs. As with all of these herbs and spices, please do your best to research them and make sure you're sourcing the best and safest ingredients you can get. If you don't feel comfortable using some of these ingredients, use your best judgment and read up on alternatives before you make this so you can alter the recipe and amounts if you need to. I'm going to be making this in three parts. An herbal tea, a red colored syrup that uses the traditional cochineal bugs, and a vodka infusion. First, I'll make the herbal tea. To my French press, I'm adding two grams of cinnamon, one and a half grams of sage, two grams of marjoram, three grams of cloves, two grams of thyme, and one star anise pod. I'll cover these herbs and spices with half a cup hot water and let them steep for 15 minutes. These ingredients tend to get over extracted by alcohol and thereby overpower the spirit. While experimenting with this recipe, I found that making a strong herbal tea worked best to capture the warm baking spice notes as well as the herbal flavors. While they're steeping, I'm going to get to work on that iconic red syrup. Cochineal bugs are responsible for Campari's brilliant red color, or at least they used to be. Campari in the U.S. has been sold with artificial coloring since 2006. In order to extract the dye, I'll have to grind the bugs in my mortar and pestle until they've become a fine dark red powder. Now I'll add a half cup of sugar and a half cup of hot water and whisk until the sugar dissolves. Then add in the ground cochineal powder and stir to combine. Now I'll just strain out the cochineal particles and set the syrup and herbal tea in the fridge until tomorrow. For the vodka infusion, I'll be using 375 milliliters of vodka, along with 15 grams grapefruit peel, 15 grams lemon peel, 25 grams bitter orange peel, 6 grams angelica root, 2 grams rosemary, 6 grams wormwood, which will act as a bittering agent as well as an aromatic. For this recipe, you'll want to find wormwood that's been treated to be thujon free. 6 grams Turkish rhubarb root and 6 grams of orris root. I'll simply pour the vodka into the mixing container and make sure that everything is submerged. This will all be infused for 12 to 18 hours. By the next day, the botanical infusion can be filtered. This infusion will be pretty dark and taste very bitter. Now all that's left to do is combine them all together. It won't look especially red just yet, but after two weeks of bottle conditioning, it will clear a bit as the sediment falls to the bottom and the red color will be more pronounced. 
To achieve more of a red color, you can decant the liqueur through a fine filter or use wine fining agents to really clarify the Campari. This Campari-esque aperitivo makes an excellent Negroni and subs out perfectly for any other Campari cocktail recipe. This is the first time I've attempted to create a liqueur of this kind, and there was certainly a learning curve. Now that I have all of these ingredients on hand, I'm looking forward to testing out some new recipes. Thank you all for watching. Please hit the like button and leave me a comment below on your favorite Campari cocktails. Thanks for stopping by and have a great week.